Hi, my name is Chris, and uh, welcome to uh, my channel called the Benchtop Micro Shop. I'm standing in my dad's dream shop, and I uh, wanted to take a little bit of time today and, and uh, do something special unpacking uh, this toolbox. Uh, a year ago, I cut, cut the lock off this toolbox. Uh, it belonged to my great grandfather. Uh, he lived from 1910 until 1996 and passed away when he was 86. Um, he uh, adopted my grandmother when she was very young and her mother died um, and he was a master carpenter and uh, what I would consider a renaissance man uh, many life skills and and very mechanically inclined and uh, loved to teach what he knew um, he personally taught me how to fish and how to sharpen a knife on a whetstone and uh, I know he taught my dad many of the carpentry tricks that he knows so uh, this toolbox has been opened a few times in the past year, but uh, mostly uh, before that lock was cut off a year ago, it, it hadn't been opened in probably uh, at least 10 years. So that's pretty, pretty special. So I haven't really rehearsed this or gone through it. Uh, I wanted it to be an adventure as I go through it uh, with all of you. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. I'll try to keep it as short as possible. Uh, but really, let's just take a look at uh, some of the tools a master carpenter uh, who's doing primarily work by hand, uh, what he would think would be uh, important tools to have on a job site. Uh, this toolbox measures about 8 inches by probably uh, 32 inches or so. And uh, the hardware on it's very rusty. Um, I don't think we have everything put away the way that uh, probably he would want it put away. So first of all, in the opening here, I'm seeing a, uh, a little saw till. And he's got a, uh, there's a crosscut saw. Here's a, a rip saw. Here's another rip saw, a little, little longer rip saw. Um, all of these teeth look like they've been uh, filed at some point. He's the type of man that, that would have filed his teeth probably by hand routinely to sharpen them. Um, let's go ahead and put the saws off to the side. Uh, something else that, that I thought was pretty neat when I opened this thing up a year ago, um, he would oil his tools when he put them away. So other than you know, job site patina and rust, everything in here has just a fine light coat of oil, the way you'd uh, put away a firearm for long-term storage or the way that you'd, you know, someone that cares about their tools is going to put them away. They're going to coat the, the surface with oil so that they don't rust. Um, and I thought that was pretty special because that really showed that, uh, that he cared about his tools and took care of them. This saw is uh, very sharp. Let's see what else do we have in here so I'm gonna go ahead and take out the tray and uh, right up front here oh, this is this is very cool there's uh, a lot of blueprints and things for different houses um, I remember going through this last year he uh, he kept notes um, of his hours there's his hours that he worked 10 hour days there um, mostly 8 or 10 hour days and he kept, this is his ledger book. There he worked for the uh, Mifflin County Creamery. That's pretty cool. 1939. 1939. He worked in August, October, December. There's 1940. This notebook goes out to... Uh, Oh, there's a bill. There's a power and light company bill for uh, $3.97 dated 1945. It sounds like a hef hefty electric bill. He, uh, he did not serve in the war. That is World War II. He had some lung problems that kept him out of service, and that was something that, uh, that he wished he, uh, he could have done. Here's a logbook from 1953. 
Yeah, this is cool. Here's a uh, how bricks are laid instructional article on uh, making a, uh, a backyard grill. I think he actually, he had one of these in his backyard, but there's a, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, this is neat. This is blueprints for a house right here. Um, these are all hand-drawn blueprints. Everything's in pencil, uh, hand-drawn. Very cool. Anyhow, a lot of detailed plans here. These, this looks like mail order plans. Uh, there's some notes on it. Gonna locate a radiator there. This is cool. Anyhow, I'll put these plans aside. They're pretty delicate and I don't want to uh, fumble with them on camera too much. But um, a bunch of plans. And just uh, just notes in here. Oh, this might have been when he worked at the creamery. Here's suggested racks for milk cans and covers. Uh, yeah, suggested floor plan of a 12 foot by 12 foot or a 10 foot by 12 foot milk house. Very cool. All right. More plans. Make sure I got a good angle here. I'm probably standing in the way of most of this stuff. So here you can see down in there. All right. So there's some sheet metal shears. A uh, carpenter square. Chalk line. A couple of expanding rules. T bevel for um, measuring angles and uh, really transferring angles. Some lines and a plumb bob. Of course you use that a lot, a lot when um, roughing in things and, and framing, making sure things are aligned straight and level. Um, of course we didn't have um, power drills and screwdrivers so here's a ratcheting screwdriver. And uh, here's a gouge of some kind. Might actually be for, uh, I don't know what this one's for. That might be some kind of a start drill or hacksaw blade. Big chisel, sharpened by hand, of course, probably with a file. Got a pretty sharp edge on it. Set it in dividers. these things are very well oiled. I don't know if you can see that, but that is a, that is a well, well made set of dividers and very, very well oiled. Speaking of oil, here's a bottle of oil. Utility knife. That's three of them. And some more chisels. These chisels also, you can tell they've been sharpened with a file. Um, this one's pretty short, so it's probably had uh, had an inch or more sharpened off of it over the years. Another file, or chisel. Blacksmith's chisel, but this one's pretty sharp, and it's got a, got a bend in it there. So I don't know why he bent that, maybe for uh, chinking out some uh, framing. More chisels. Here's a uh, vinyl knife. Thing's pretty beat up. What is this thing? Oh, it's a marking gauge. That's an interesting marking gauge. So this is a, uh, this is number 824. It's a general butt gauge. It's got uh, some blades on it for marking and then it's got a roller there. So you can lock it and unlock it. That is cool. Little protractor. Some pin punches in the bottom of the toolbox there. That one's pinned out pretty good. Graphite gun. Little tube graphite for locks or whatever he's working on there. What is this cell? 
Well, I'm sure he had some power tools there. There's a, uh, a carbide tipped uh, masonry drill bit. <laughs> this is a grease tube in an old uh, sterilized razor tube. So he kept some grease in there. There's a bubble out of an old level. Some band-aids. Let's see what he actually kept in here. Oh, little screws, odds and ends in a toolbox. Oh, what are these? Dad, do you know what these are? These are little clamps. These must be for some kind of clamps. They go on squares. Oh, okay. This is for a square. Right, especially on a uh, framing square. So this is a square, like a stop on a square? On, on a framing square. For uh, yep. repeating measurements. Or other squares. So There's some... Uh, line up for things like stair steps and rafters. And okay. So I found some more bits here. These are for a drill. So this is a drill bit. It's a, like a plunge ratchet drill bit. And they're like a spade bit. Um, here's some tips for his uh, screwdriver. That is cool. Okay, so there's some things he kept in and had them put away just right. You gotta have a good pen. There's the pen. Another uh, blacksmith's uh, or masonry uh, punch or um, chisel. It looks like it's had some grinder sharpening. Some chalk markers, crayon markers. Oh, this is actually wood filler putty. Putty sticks. It's a aspirin. This is actual, uh, what is it? Yeah, aspirin and caffeine. And another um, extension for uh, drill. Scratch all for marking centers and things. It's like he filed that sharp. It's got flat sides on her. Maybe took it to a grinder. Another chisel. Let's see what else we got in here. Another little like chapstick container with uh, screws in it. Hardware. Look at that. No rust on that stuff. How on earth? Okay. little tiny stone for sharpening or honing piece of soap stone or whatever that is a flat file single cut that is cool what else we got here soap stone for marking a little compass what else we have in here some little uh, etc you know whenever you get a headache on the job you gotta get it to go away Some nail sets. Boy, he sharpened them down to punches. Some nail sets that have been modified. There's a point punch. Some old, old nail sets. Carpenter's pencil. A little Phillips screwdriver. What are these? These are uh, old time sunglasses. There you go. Green tint for probably over his, uh, his normal wear glasses. Some coping saw blades. Look like pretty good blades. Coping saw blades. The HK Porter Company in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We're in Pennsylvania, by the way. Um, so here's the main portion of the toolbox. Oh. So his level has like a little uh, little bent holder there for it. Nice steel level. Power craft of the Montgomery Ward and Company. All right. Here's a little. Uh, Draw knife. Use that for uh, chamfering the ends of things. Uh, pretty good edge on it. Looks like it's filed, been filed. Here's the coping saw that we had those blades for. Good old coping saw. This is a. Uh, I can't even read the name of it. It's from Indianapolis, Indiana. Can't read the brand on it. Hacksaw. Every toolbox needs one. Here's his uh, hand drill. 
and that's pretty cool. The wood's got lots of oil in it. A little bit of surface rust, but not much. Looks like it's in good working order. Yeah, everything works smooth. 100 foot uh, tape measure. Of course, you need that to lay out uh, lay out your framing for surveying or whatever. It's in this box. Hand level. Oh, that's cool. So speaking of surveying, there's a little the lens is cracked, but it's a, a six inch hand level, it says. So it looks like, have a look through that. Oh yeah, so it's got a little uh, little vertical line in it and a level inside, so you can sight along things and see if, if it's level. That is cool. <clears throat> Okay. There's some uh, Stanley fasteners. I can't even tell what type. Oh wow, that's interesting. Okay, so that's for joining trusses or whatever. You pound them in. They're corrugated fasteners. They keep joints from separating. Probably for framing trusses. It's a pack of a hundred. Here's a nail bag. Let's see what kind of nails are in it. Oh, sounds like there's something other than nails. There we go. Okay. A little bit of rust in here. That's why I uh, probably don't want to put them away in cloth, but drill bits. So a bunch of old drill bits of different sizes. Cool. Here's an adjustable spade bit. Very neat. I have never used one of these, I don't think. Put that right back in. Here's another nail bag with actual nails in it. And there's some framing nails. Very cool. Hammer, a little fiberglass handled. Nothing too fancy there. He's got a block plane, a little Stanley. See if we can brush that out. There we go, a Stanley number 220 block plane. Take a look at the edge on that. That shoe is uh, nicely oiled. Action on it's pretty smooth still. Definitely put it away uh, in good order. Well, it's got a sharp edge on it. It's uh, The way he sharpened it's kind of interesting. It's got a little camber to it. Um, definitely been sharpened by hand, probably with a file or on a, on a stone. Of course, it's adjusted uh, nice and square there, so he, uh, he put it away ready to go. Now we have a long bench plane here of some kind. I got a, uh, oh, that's cool. This is a uh, Stanley Bailey. Hard to read on this one. It's made in the USA. Can't get a number off it. Num oh, there we go. A number five. So Stanley, Stanley number five uh, bench plane or maybe a smoothing plane of some kind. I'm not uh, not the most knowledgeable person on planes, but there you go. Oh, that uh, it's got nice smooth action. Look at that. single finger adjusting. Well oiled and well tuned, like you'd expect. Very cool. So that is it. That's the bottom of the toolbox right there. So that is that. Let me give you a little pan over it. And uh, if you got any questions about any of this stuff, let me know. I'll try to answer it to the best of my ability, but uh, we're about to a 20 minute video. So anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the tour of the toolbox. I definitely thought that was pretty cool. Oh, here, we'll pan over here. Get material that was in it and his hand saws very cool so thanks for watching